Good morning, everyone. The Lord be with you. And also with you. I was outside yesterday afternoon, and the wind came up. And when I when I walked inside, I wiped my forehead. And I was all covered in dust, and I thought oh, that can't be good on allergies. And it's not. So hopefully my voice holds up this morning. But um, good to see everybody this morning. I couldn't believe it's like 6:15, and it was already getting light out this morning. So that's uh, spring's coming, whether we want it or not. I guess. Which I do want it. So, got a few announcements for you this morning. Um, first one, no education hour. We have several people that um, uh, just found out a couple more that tested positive for COVID over the last week. And so we're just gonna separate out the education hour this week. And, um, uh, and hopefully they'll all be back next week doing well. And um, uh, ladies, the LWML Spring Rally will be held, uh, is that three weeks now? can't believe it's already April. Uh, April 21st at St. Paul's in Osseo, and um, uh, some Bible translators, the Elliot Derrick's family will be speaking, and there'll be a special offering for him. So if, if you would like to go, um, you can see Edie or Julie and uh, get tickets for that. Um, let's see, spaghetti dinner next week. That's what I can't believe is already next week. April 10th, Palm Sunday. So spaghetti dinner and the Easter egg hunt. So, and I know you're looking forward to that, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking forward to the candy that they collect. So anyway, um, let's see um, a few things here. New glasses and I can't see. Drives me crazy. Um, uh, oh, the seat wrapped the, tr wrapped the truck. We had uh, 1,800, over 1,800 pounds <coughs> of food delivered and $1,255, uh, yes, $1,255 donated. So uh, what a great night. And the truck I saw was, uh, I could see the church signs all around the community where they were having seat as well. So uh, hopefully they had a good, good turnout and a good donation for that as we continue to help people in that. Um, this morning, um, if you've ever been to Southern Southern Baptist Church where they sing the old time Southern thing, you'll get a taste of that this morning in our service. Um, the hymn after the Old Testament is entitled "To God Be the Glory," and it's got uh, it's a Fanny Crosby song. So you'll get to be that. When uh, Edie was practicing this morning, I told her I was having flashbacks <laughs> to my Pentecostal days. So the, the words have been Lutheranized a little bit, so it didn't take a whole lot to change it up, but I was surprised to see it in there, and I thought, well, we gotta sing that now that they've got it up in there. So, But it's actually on two pages in your hymnal, so uh, the refrain, I think, is on the second page, but you have to flip the page to get to it, uh, just the way the computer did it to us today. And uh, so anyway, just, just pre-prepared for that. It's kind of a foot thumper. You're supposed to get into it, I guess. Uh, let's see, birthdays this week. Um, Joyce, Danica, and LeBron all have birthdays this week, and we wish them a uh, happy birthday. This is our uh, uh, last Sunday in Lent. Next week we're Palm Sunday, but we still get the promise and the warning yet today in, in today's readings, and, and so we'll focus on that um, for our lesson. But uh, before we, uh, I guess we're ready to begin. Why don't we begin with our first hymn?
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your Amen. blessings be upon your people. I cried aloud to the Lord, and he answered me from his holy hill. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, <clears throat> beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and that you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O oh, Almighty God, merciful God, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings in heaven, your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. To the impenitent and the unbelieving, I declare so that as long as you continue in your impenitence, God will not forgive your sins and will visit your iniquity upon you until you turn from your sinful ways. Come to repentance and trust in the merits of Christ alone. Amen. Amen. May the Lord who has begun this good work within us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. O oh God, the Father in heaven, have mercy upon us. O oh God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. O oh God, the Holy Spirit, Sanctifier of the faithful, have mercy upon us. Remember not our offenses, but forgive us, O Lord, whom you have redeemed with your most precious blood. From all blindness, hardness of heart, and impenitence. The Lord deliver us. From all pride, hypocrisy, anger, hatred, and greed. Good the Lord deliver us. From the deceit of the devil, from the lure of the world and our own flesh. Good the Lord deliver us. In time of danger, in the hour of trial, and in the day of judgment. Good the Lord deliver us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Save us, O Lord, for the sake of your name. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God,
with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your great goodness, mercifully look upon your people that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. This is the last Sunday before we enter Holy Week. And on this day, we hear the warning of the Lord against those who refuse his mercy, as well as the promise that those who trust in him will never be forsaken. <clears throat> the Old Testament reading for the fifth Sunday in Lent is from the 43rd chapter of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings forth chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise, they are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing, now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness, and rivers in the desert. The wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
So they watched him and sent spies who pretended to be sincere that they might catch him in something he said so as to deliver him up to the authority and jurisdiction of the governor. This is the gospel of the Lord. As we prepare our hearts for uh, taking Holy Communion this morning, let us confess together the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being the one substance of the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us then and for our salvation came down from heaven, and who was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and who was made man, and who was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and on the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge my baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. You may be seated. <clears throat>
grace, mercy, and peace be yours in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. I thought this morning I'd tell you my favorite TV show or one of them, and then one of my favorite movies, too. We'll talk that way, I guess. Uh, American Pickers, you've probably watched it. Maybe, maybe not. But it's one of my favorite shows. It's on the History Channel, and it's mainly reruns now. But Mike and Frank are the two main characters, and they drive, they're from Iowa, and they drive all over the country, back roads and small towns, and they look at houses that have a lot of junk outside, and then they'll go pick those places. And uh, they call themselves recyclers. And they have a knack for digging into these piles of junk and finding treasures. And one of my favorite, favorite that I like to watch is when they find old motorcycles and old gas pumps. And a lot of the gas pumps from the 20s are signs from those bygone years. And I like when they'll dig through stuff and they'll pull basically something that's been buried out of the ground. And it can be a bicycle or a motorcycle that's way over 100 years old. And, and uh, it always makes me want to start restoring my, my gold wing or, my, or a car or a pickup or something. But it's amazing the things that were discarded, even back in the 90s now, are, are, are considered Americana and things to be sought after. You know, as we go through this season of Lent, we are reminded that we are to get rid of the garbage in our own lives. And, and one of the worst things about picking is how filthy and dirty you can get when you're trying to recover old items. And a lot of times, what they don't really show on the show is when you start digging through these piles of garbage, the stench that can arise from bygone eras. And Lent should remind us, brothers and sisters, of the garbage and the filth that we try to hide in our own lives uh, before a perfect and holy God who only wants to restore us and make us like new again. Now in our epistle lesson, the Apostle Paul in his letter talks about uh, not that he's done it, but that he's hoping to be righteous and he's looking to Christ's righteousness. But at the beginning, when we first meet Paul as Saul, he thought his life was a great example for other people as he went around destroying Christians for God's sake. He thought he was doing things that would make God happy. He had been so caught up in serving God in his way that he never even bothered to see if his life was pleasing God or not. Paul thought that his life was a great example for others to model off of. At least he did until the Lord knocked him off his high horse and told him what he was doing. But even today, many Christians, like Paul, mistakenly think that their lives uh, that there's enough in their lives for God to be pleased about. However, there's a magazine called Your Church that a few years ago noted that 83% of U.S. churches are in decline. 83%. And of that, that means that 17% are growing. But here's the problem with those growing churches. Only 4% of those 17% are growing through new Members, in other words, bringing unbelievers into the faith. That means that they're just taking 13% from other churches and shuffling them around. If the church is doing such a great job of living God-pleasing lives, why then is almost 97% of it dying? What's going on in the church? Are we really even looking to see if we have a pulse? That's what I said, Lent is a time when we should review our lives. We think our words reflect Christ, but profanity is as common in the church as is air pollution. We think our minds are filled with Christ, but instead it's the TV and books and movies that lead us to lifestyles that justify sin and have no remorse for actions that go against Scripture. Look at Disney. Everybody wants to go to Disney and be like Disney. But look what they announced they're going to do to destroy our children this week. You need to look it up and see what the board and the CEO is going to do to your children. Yet we think that's okay. We still keep going there as Christians. We think our eyes look heavenward. But the crowd waves, waves those foam noodles at us to distract us. Noodles of greed and pride and envy and lust and laziness. 
We think our hearts are filled with Christ, but our coronary arteries are clogged with apathy, indifference, and selfishness. We think our actions are Christ-like and loving, but self gets in the way. We're all wrapped up in our own wants and our own needs, and we won't dare let anything change in the church so that we can grow. I told you I'd tell you my favorite movie too. One of my favorite all-time movies is called Chariots of Fire. Chariots of Fire. And it's, gosh, it's been out a long time ago now. It shows my age. But Eric Little was preparing to compete in the 1924 Olympics in Paris. And he waited exciting, excitingly for the postings of the Olympic heats in the 100 meter and the 4 by 100 and 4 by 400 relays. Those were his best events. But he was stunned to see when they posted when those would be, that the dashes were gonna be on Sunday morning. And he said, I'm not running. He flatly refused and then turned his attention to train for the events he wasn't very good at, the 200 meter and the 400 meter. He considered Sunday to be a sacred day Nothing would be get in the way of the Lord, especially sports. And he would honor his convictions at the expense of his own success and fame. So on Sunday, July 6th, Little preached in a church in Paris instead of running the races. As the gun sounded for the 100-meter heats, he was beginning his sermon. Three days later, he finished third in the 200-meter sprint taking an unexpected bronze medal. Everybody was surprised he finished it all. And he quietly waited, made his way through the heats of the 400 meters, but they didn't expect him to do anything. So shaking hands with the other, other finalists, he readied his, for the race of his life. Arms thrashing, head bombing and bobbing and tilted, his legs dancing, little ran to victory. A total surprise to everybody five meters ahead of the silver medalist, who was the record holder at the time. They called him the Flying Scotsman after that, and he set up, had a gold record, a gold medal, and a new world record, 47.6 seconds, which was fast back then. Most of all, Eric Little had kept his commitment to his Lord and his conviction of faith. Now, you think he would have went on for a commercial success after the Olympics, like they do nowadays, but Eric Little gave up the Olympics. He gave up running, and instead he became a missionary to, to China. Well, as you can imagine, that wasn't the best time to go to China as a missionary. And in a Japanese internment camp, a brain tumor claimed his life in 1943. One of his friends noted that Eric wasn't really a great leader, and he was, really wasn't an inspired thinker. But he knew what he ought to do, and he did it no matter what. Eric Little described his life for Christ in two words. He said, complete surrender. That was all he knew how to do for Jesus. The Apostle Paul said it this way in our epistle lesson. He said, but whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness, righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to atone, attain to the resurrection from the dead. You see, Paul realized he had to change his focus from doing things for God to knowing Christ. And as a Pharisee, Paul would have started each day in Bible study and prayer and as an apostle, it was obvious he continued that focus. Through our own Bible studies, brothers and sisters, through our own prayer, the Holy Spirit will also empower us 
and help runs alongside us as we run the race of life. Paul focused in on telling others about Jesus Christ. He proclaimed the gospel to large groups and to anyone he ran into. He became all things to all people so that with God's grace, more people could be one for Christ. Both the Apostle Paul and Eric Little put their past lives of success and glory behind them for the sake of the gospel. They both knew that a much better prize awaited them in heaven than anything this world could offer. You do not have to be famous or skilled to make a difference for Jesus. God asks only, a, only that you serve him faithfully and wholeheartedly in whatever it is he has you do. You see, as this season of Lent begins to wind down, brothers and sisters, focus your life on the future, not on your past. Forget what lies behind you. Strain towards what is ahead. Press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called you to. No matter what is in your past, just leave it there. Forget about it. Count on Jesus Christ to run alongside you every day of the rest of your life. Run for Jesus. Lead others to him. Lead them to the goal which is in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. It is now time for the offering as we give back to the Lord the little of what he's given to us. Please rise with me for prayer. Let us offer to the Lord our, the prayers of our heart, trusting in his mercy to supply all things needful for this body and life and for eternal life. Give to us grace, Heavenly Father, that we not reject Christ, the cornerstone, but build on him our hopes of salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Hear our prayer. Give to us grace, Heavenly Father, that we hear the voice of your word, heed the call of the prophets, and faithfully proclaim this gospel to all the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give to us grace, Heavenly Father, that our, all our leaders guide us according to your word in the cause of justice and for the provision of the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give to us grace, Heavenly Father, that we repent of our sins, believe in Jesus Christ our Savior, and show forth in our lives the good works you desire. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give to us grace, Heavenly Father, that we find refuge in your healing wounds. Hear us especially this morning as we pray for Jerry, Kathy, Tim, and all those who have come down with COVID over the past week. Lord, for all those who need a touch from you, and all those who we now name before you in our hearts. Lord, 
in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Give to us grace, Heavenly Father, that we acknowledge your goodness and use well all the resources you have supplied us <coughs> so that your name be glorified. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Give to us grace, Heavenly Father, that we approach, that we who approach the table of your Son be worthy in faith to receive his body and blood, bear the fruits of repentance in our daily lives, and live in unity of faith and godly concord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Give us grace, Heavenly Father, to confess you before the world, and at the last to rest our hope upon the promise of the resurrection, when we shall dwell together with all the saints in light and life forevermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Thank you. 
welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given unto death for you. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Shed for the forgiveness of all your sins. And now may the body and blood of our Lord strengthen and preserve you steadfast in body and soul to life everlasting. Be part of this peace.
for he is good. Lord, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.